Schools from across South Africa have answered the call of the mystical cave and believe they have what it takes to take on the grueling challenges of the sacred grounds. Each week, schools will go head to head in brain and brawn challenges where only the fastest team to beat the cave will claim the coveted Cave Quest Cup. It's about to get real. Mondi, it's on! Hello and welcome to Cave Quest. My name is Raymond, but my friends call me Mondi. Let's meet our cave raiders all the way from Ennerdale Secondary School! Ennerdale! <laughs> Let's be the other cave raiders from Fred Norman! We are Fred Norman, and no one can be proud of. And if you cannot yell, we shout a lot of My name is Cody Bratz. And my name is the Eric and, and we, we are, are the Springboks! We are Fred Norman, and no one can be proud of. And if you cannot yell, we shout a lot of love. My name is Winona Maponya, and she is... And we are the Proteas. Green team is the win team. We small, okay, I'm not gonna lie, we are small, but we agile, we are just everything. We are the, the entire package. I'm feeling super califragilistic, SP are the and how about you? I'm feeling so excited today, and it's going to be a big day. Welcome, Raiders, welcome, welcome. How are you guys feeling? I saw you guys dancing there in the beginning. Are you guys the Majaivanas at the school? Yes, we Can are. Can you guys show me a little bit of something, Yana? Yeah, nah. yeah, 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 yeah
Oh, some Anjaluna. Come on, Anjaluna. It looks like they have a strategy, but will it work? All right, teams, come on, come on. The time is running out. Who's going to take the number one spot? All right, so the blue grades look like they have a strategy. Some pieces are coming together. This is looking great. Andy Swa seems very, very focused. Nasso, the Protea seem to be the first team. Mondi, did they get it right? All right, got it right. Proteas are the first ones to go through. Let's see who's going to take all the sprint box at second. Uh, Cody seems very excited. He's screaming for joy. Got it right. Got it right. What's a spring box? Spring box. Ah. All right, so now it's between the blue craze and the Hyundai. Who's going to take it, Mundy? Cheshisani Hyundai. Time is running out, just to not make sure. No, yeah. This is somewhere, yeah. This is here, okay. Kaluna is still a bit confused. Blue Cranes, let's see. Let's see, Blue Cranes. You got it right. Oh! Well done, well done, well done, Pro Cheers, well done, Springboks, and well done, Blue Crane. Ish, Gue, Icona, Vesilfuna, Silsole Vele, so good, but it is also a part. Hey, I can see. The silting and silting and silting is the thing I need to sound another of my silting and a panty with that phone. Well done, Pro Cheers, Springboks, and Blue Cranes. You guys are still in the game and also still in the running to find the hidden artifact and beat the cave. Pro Cheers, you guys won this round, which means you guys get a time crystal. Congratulations. Woo! How did you guys even do it that fast? You know, teamwork makes the dream work. Okay, I see you. Teamwork makes the dream work. And you guys, I see you guys doing a little bit of a young dance. What was that one? Can you show me? Yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa. All right. <laughs> Join me after the break to see which of the three remaining teams will make it through to the cave challenges for a shot at retrieving Mam Esther Matangu's paintbrush. See you in a bit. <laughs> to Cave Quest as we uncover the story of Dr. Esther Matlangu, a visual artist whose Ndebele-inspired paintings have taken the culture to the world. The Blue Cranes, Proteas, and Springboks have made it through round one and are one step closer to retrieving Mam Esther Matlangu's paintbrush and winning some amazing prizes. Let's find out how round two works. have to choose who is going to answer the questions and who's going to take the leap. The Raiders who choose to answer will be told a story about the hero of the day. Then they will each take a turn to answer the questions based on the story. The first two teams to answer three questions correctly will move on to the next round. Hey, one team will be eliminated. Mfana. Who's going to answer and who's going to take the leap? You guys have to choose carefully because the pressure is on the teammate who has to answer. I'll give you 10 seconds to decide. <laughs> Time is up. Great. Then listen carefully because the key to conquering this cave is hidden in the story. 
In November 1935, a young Ndebele girl by the name of Esther Nikwambi Mathangu was born in a village just outside Middleburg in Mpumalanga. Little did she know that she would grow up to be one of the greatest artists to ever come out of South Africa and even celebrated by the whole world. Esther started painting when she was just 10 years old. Taught by both her mother and her grandmother, she would learn the skill of mural painting, a tradition passed down from mother to daughter over generations whose duty was culturally to paint the exterior of Ndebele houses. It was through this cultural tradition that Gok Esther Mathangu's journey as an artist began. Gok Esther Mathangu used paintbrushes made from chicken feathers to make her beautiful paintings. And since then, she's gone to marvel the world with her art, collected by international artists like Trevor Noah, John Legend, Swiss Beats, and even Oprah Winfrey. Mathangu first gained international attraction in 1989 at a French show called Magician de la Dare, which means Magicians of the World, where she painted a replica of her very own house right in front of visitors. Gok Esther Mathangu's biggest highlight, however, was in 2020, when she became the first artist in the world to be called in to paint an artwork for the gallery of the new Rolls-Royce Phantom, which they named the Mathangu in her honor. That's how epic Gok Esther Mathangu is. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Yes! yes. Are you guys ready? Yes! Protea, since you guys won the last round, you get the first question. Best of luck to you all. And here comes the first question. What type of artist is Mam Esther Mathangu? Sculptor, vocalist, painter? A painter. Correct. <laughs> what was the one artwork that she painted in front of a large international audience? A replica of a house, a clay pot, a statue. A replica of a house. A replica of a house, well done! Which province is she originally from? Gauteng, Mpumalanga, Limpopo. Gauteng. Ah, you didn't get that one correct. Sorry, Blue Cranes. Ace, 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 ace. What are the traditional copper brass rings that Ndebele women wear around their arms, necks, and legs called? Zila, Iporiana, Is Iskindi. Iskindi. Ah, no, you did not get that one correct. Proteus, still standing on one point. At what age did she begin painting? Is it 10, 17, 23? 10. Well done, Springboks! <laughs> Currently standing on two points. Currently standing on two points. Mum Esther is known to mix sand in her painting. Which transparent material is created when you heat up a limestone and soda ash at a very high temperature? Is it copper, glass, or foil? It's foil. Ah, you didn't get that one correct. Blue grades! You didn't get that one correct. All right, let's move on to you, Proteus. When was Mum Esther Matangu born? Is it 1928, 1935, or 1943? 1935. 1935 is correct! You earn yourself a two points. You earn yourself two points. What type of bird's feather did she make her paint brushes from? Is it guinea fowl, a pigeon, or chicken? A chicken. Ah, come on, the best! All right. In 2020, she became the first artist in the world to be commissioned to paint an artwork for an international car brand. What name was given to the car to honor her? Is it A, Esther 2.0, B, Esther, or C, the Machangu? The Machangu. Well done, you get a point! Welcome to the scoreboard. Welcome to the scoreboard, welcome to the scoreboard. Springboks, you know you've made it into the scoreboard. All right, Proteus, I'm coming to you. Which month was Mum Esther Machangu born? Was it January, September, or November? November. November. November is correct! November is correct! November is correct! 
That means Pro Chess and Springboks, you will advance the next rounds, and Blue Crane sadly will be losing you. I mean, I just panicked, then my answer disappeared all of a sudden. Even if it didn't win, good rides is a booyah next time. You're still watching Cave Quest as we uncover the story of Dr. Esther Matlangu. We've lost Anna Dale, but we still have Fred Norman. Fred Norman, are you still there? <laughs> Yes, the Springboks and the Proteas have made it through to the Obstacle Course Challenge and are one step closer to retrieving that hidden artifact and winning amazing prizes. Let's find out how round three works. Round three, the Obstacle Course. First, the Raiders must decide which teammate will run the course and who's going to build the puzzle. The runners have to crawl under the spider net, run through the colored cones, untie the key hanging from their team flag, then run up the wooden ramp, climb down the net, run to their teammate and hand them the key. The builder unlocks the chest and assembles the puzzle. In this puzzle, all the lines must add up to nine. The first team to complete the puzzle correctly moves on to the final round. And as a penalty, the losing team has to give all their crystals that they've accumulated throughout the game to the winning team. You guys have a time crystal and you guys have a time crystal. Are you guys ready? Yes. Are you guys ready? Yes. And in three, two, one, go. And the teams are off, they dive straight into it. Come on, Proteas, come on, Springboks. Oh, the Springboks seem to be the first one out. And they're the first ones to their flag. Come on, Proteas, you can catch up. And there it is, Cody is running up the ramp. And right behind him are the Proteas. Oh my goodness, it's right indeed. Come on, Proteas, come on, Springboks. It's very, very tight, guys. Nasa! Thierry has the key and he's unlocking his chest. And right behind, there we go. All right, so now it looks like the Proteas are catching up, unlocking their box. The pieces are out, and they are solving for nine on each side. Let's see how the Proteas are doing. No, done! And just like that, the Proteas have indeed made it through. That was super quick. Hey, dear Kichima, guys. Unfortunately, the Springboks are going to get better, my gents. I'm definitely disappointed, but I feel like we could have done better, but I'm proud of myself, more especially the opposing team. They done very, very, very well. If we have cal cal if we had calculated a year of time, we would have maybe beaten them or been a tie or something. But at least we tried. I didn't believe it. I thought they were just like lying and stuff, but wow. Now nah, they they really uh, impressed me. I underestimated them. But uh, I'm, I'm proud of him. So, because at the end of the day, we stay, we're all friends, so can't be angry at him for winning us. Welcome back to Cave Quest as we uncover the story of Dr. Esther Matangu. Before the ad break, we had to see the Raiders decide if they're going to be the runner or the builder in order to complete the obstacle course challenge. Now, this is what it comes down to. The beat the cave round. Let's count how many time crystals you've collected throughout the game. If you have two time crystals, which means you have one minute added to your time. Round four, beat the cave. Teams must crawl through the color bomb bridge, then climb onto the bridge and carefully make their way across the bridge, releasing their team flag. Jump off the bridge, climb up the ladder, swing into the second chamber, untie the knot, lowering the drawbridge. Once over the drawbridge, they must run into the final chamber and climb up the tire wall and retrieve the artifact. Then the Raiders must quickly get to the finish mat before time runs out. Raiders can also find mystery vouchers hidden in the cave, but this could cost them time. 
Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. All right, and in three, two, one, go, Arie. The balloons are bubbling, and teamwork is making the dream work, because Bunora is up first, and right behind is Aluake. Come on, come on! The time is going to run out. Why are the blue cranes still on the bridge? And down goes the flag. Come on, Proteas, the time is running out. And Bunola's in the second chamber. She gives her teammate the rope. Come on, come on, come on, the time is running out. The audience is cheering them on. Wasa, wasa. And over the bridge. Careful, careful. Now the teams need to go up the tire wall. With just 20 seconds to spare, will they make it in time? Aluake throws the artifact. And nah, so congratulations to the Proteas. You have beaten the cave. You win 2,000 rand for the team. Congratulations. Let's see where they rank on the leaderboard. Thank you so much for joining us on another Epic Cave Quest. Join us next time for more action and another proudly South African story. I'm Mondi. See you next time. <laughs> One of the perfect days in life. Oh, I enjoyed it. Literally, Toroyaka came through just <laughs> right now, today. <laughs> Yo. Hey. We're gonna come back by fire by force. Hey. Listen, hey. Hey, nah. we are in it to win it, Fred Norman for the win number we one, one, back one. Revenge. Watch out by fire by force.